Hi, everyone. I want to talk briefly about how to heal the pain of estrangement and alienation. When we're faced with that kind of a problem, it can really bring out the worst in us. It can bring out feelings of fear, of sadness, of sorrow, of regret, of guilt, of shame, it can cause us to socially isolate, to not tell people about what we're going through, to not get the kind of support that we need. So there are a few different principles that I think are really important uh, that I found very helpful when working with parents who are, who are going through this. The first is to learn the, um, the uh, exercise of radical acceptance. Radical acceptance is the idea that there are some things that no matter how terrible they are and how much pain they cause us, we can't change. You know, you may have written a great amends letter uh, to your adult child and may have done all everything right and your kid may still not be willing or able to reconcile with you. And so you're left with these terrible feelings of loss and sadness and regret and maybe anger. But part of what makes those feelings worse and more painful and more difficult is the way that we fight our feelings. The reality is the more that we fight those feelings, the worse off we're gonna be. There's a great saying by Marshall Linehan, who's a psychologist who developed dialectical behavior therapy. Linehan says, the pathway out of hell is through misery. The more that we fight our misery, the more that we remain in hell. Now, what, what Linehan means by that comment is the more that we kind of feel like, oh no, I can't tolerate this. This is too painful. This is too difficult. I can't live without my child. Um, what's my life gonna be like if I never see my child again? The worse that we're going to feel, the more pain that, that we're actually going to feel. There was a study that was done um, I believe it was in Stanford, where they took two groups of people and um, they had each immerse an arm in freezing cold water, which is a very painful feeling. The first group, they said, now, when you do that, I want you to just do whatever you can do to put that feeling out of your mind. However, you need to distract yourself, distract yourself. The second group, they said, now, what I want you to do is really go toward that feeling, really focus on what that cold water feels like. Now, paradoxically, and important to my point, is that the group that was told to go toward the feeling, to, uh, to actually focus on what that feeling felt like, could actually keep their arm in the cold water longer, and they rated it as less painful than the other group. So when we're going through an estrangement or an alienation, there's really nothing I can tell you that's going to cause you not to feel pain you're going to feel pain. You're gonna see a grandmother pushing her grandchild down the street and feel pain. You're gonna look at pictures of your child when they were young and feel pain. You're gonna have a dream of, of you and your adult child where they reconcile with you and all is forgiven and repaired and feel pain. You're gonna to go to your friend's house and see them with their adult children who are very loving and affectionate and feel pain. You can't avoid any of that. What you can do, though, is learn how to manage that in a way that doesn't make it worse. And that is tied to the notion of radical acceptance, that the more that we allow our feelings to kind of come and go, the more that we label them, the more that we allow face the feeling, the shorter the duration it's going to be and the less intense it's going to be. So another way to think about this is that um, pain uh, or rather that um, depression is living in the past, anxiety is living in the future, and joy and resilience is living in the present. Now, the reason this is important is because when we're going through an estrangement or alienation, we're living in the past when we're feeling um, regret, guilt, shame, uh, self-blame, self-criticism. We're living in the future when we're catastrophizing, when we're saying, you know, I can't have a happy life without my child in it. What if I never see my children or grandchildren again? When we're living in the present, we're just acknowledging that that's how we feel. And the more that we can simply acknowledge that that's how we feel, face the feeling, the more it's going to come in, but then it's going to move on. It's going to be very much like the slow, uh, the leaf that falls in this slow moving stream and gradually passes out of awareness. So I hope this has been helpful to you. And I hope that you remember these principles because they really can help. Thank you.